Hi and welcome to Pictorial Planet. Today we're going to be talking about spot metering and we're going to take very basic spot metering today but before we do that we really need to discuss the zone system. Now you don't have to be a zony to do spot metering but it's useful to understand the zone system in a simple way so that we can place our metering in that zone. Later on when I go out and take the photograph I'll be talking about the zones and placing things in zones so it's useful for us to understand that. So let's look at the computer for a moment. So the zone system can be read about in multitudes of books. I'm sure there's loads of videos on YouTube about the zone system but what I want to focus on and what I will use on my channel is a very simplified zone system. The one that really matters to us as black and white photographers. I'm going to describe it now and there are really three zones that we are really bothered about when we're doing our photography and that's zone 3, zone 5 and zone 8. I'll just describe those now. Zone 3 then is our shadows and that is where when we look into sh the shadows of our scene we can see good detail in those shadows. They should be in zone 3. Zone 5 is middle grey and there's lots of middle greys when we go out photographing. For instance green grass is pretty much zone 5 middle grey. So if you need to take a middle grey meter reading you can point your spot meter at some grass lit by the same light as your subject and you know you're getting a meter reading of zone 5. And zone 8 and this is where we meet to read clouds. Now clouds, fluffy, beautiful fluffy white clouds with detail in them. You know that puffy billowy detail that you get in clouds? That's zone 8 and that's the highlight where beyond that we start to burn out our film. So we don't want to go higher than zone 8 if we want detail in our scene. I just want to quickly touch on zone 10. Specular highlights are at zone 10 so like glistening water, the glistens, those bright white glistens on the water are zone 10. Uh, reflections from chrome or mirrors, that kind of thing, they're all up here in zone 10. They don't have any detail in so we don't worry about those at all, they're okay. So just backing up a little bit again, zone 3 is our shadows, zone 5 our middle grey, zone 8 is our highlights with detail like our fluffy white clouds or a white dress uh, on a woman. Now notice something between 3 and 8 are 5 stops so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 5 stops between 3 and 8. That is the latitude of our film and we call it the latitude because it's from detailed shadows to detailed highlights that is the capability of our film. In later videos we're going to look at how to bring down things that are pushed too high by the brightness of the sun, how to bring them down into these zones within the latitude of our film. But that's another subject. So today I'm going to go out to this lovely looking little shed and I'm going to photograph it and I'm going to measure the shadows. When I measure them they're going to be the meter is going to think it's mid-grey but we know better so when we measure shadows we're going to know we have to close the camera down two stops to put them, force them into zone 3. That is the zone system in a nutshell. It's actually very straightforward and very important when we're using a spot meter. So let's go back outside now, take a look at the scene and see how these zones are going to fit in with our spot metering. So why do we spot meter at all? Well I've told you in the past that an incident light meter reading is very accurate. It measures the amount of light falling on your subject. If you know that you can get a really good average meter reading to set on your camera. But with a spot meter we have another tool in our toolbox and a very important one at that. Let's have a look at this scene. On the right hand side there's the chicken coop. There's a lot of shadow in there and I'd like to capture some of that shadow on my film. We have the bright yellow window, that's reflecting a lot of light. I'd like to know where that sits. I don't want it too high that it's burned out. I think the highlight though of this scene is this chair. 
we have some old weathered wood and this is very bright. So if I could capture everything from my shadow detail right up to my highlight detail and know that that's going to be captured on my film, I'd be very happy indeed. And that's where a spot meter comes in. Let's take some meter readings and I'll tell you what I mean. So let's take our meter readings. It's getting hot around here, so I've had to take the jacket off. Um, now, when you take your meter readings with a spot meter, you want to get close to your subject and fill the frame with whatever you're meter reading to ensure you get a very accurate meter reading. Now, I always start with the shadows, and we'll come back to those in a minute when we set the camera. But the shadows are important to measure first in my methodology. So just follow along with what I'm doing. So first of all, the shadows just inside the doorway behind the sunlit part of this doorway into the chicken coop. And I get a 60th at 2.8 and a half. So now I'm going to measure the brown of the building. 250th at 2.8 and a half. Let's see, let's drop the half to make the maths easier. So a 60th at 2.8, one stop to 125th, one stop to 250th. So the brown is two stops higher than the shadows. That's well within our film. Let's look at the yellow window. That's 2000 at 2.8. 2000, let's work up from the shadows to see how much higher they are. So a 60th they started at, 125, 250, 500, 1000, 2000 is five stops. So the yellow is five stops higher than the shadows, still within the latitude of our film. Let's check out this seat. I want to get really close here. I want to capture this exactly what I want to do. And it's 2000 at 2.8. So in fact, that's the same as the yellow window. And if you remember, I actually thought this was the highlight. So it wasn't, they're both the same. It just shows how the eye can fool you very easily and how a spot meter uh, is an essential tool. So now we know that our highlights are five stops higher than our shadows and that's within the latitude of our film. So we don't have to adjust anything else, we just have to set the camera. But what do I set the camera to? Well, remember we expose for the shadows and what that means is we take our shadow meter reading which was a 60th at 2.8, and we close the camera down two stops from that meter reading. So a 60th at 2.8, closing the camera down two stops is a 60th at 5.6. Remember, 2.8 to 4 to 5.6, that's two stops down. And by closing the camera down two stops, we're placing the shadows in zone three. And zone three is an important zone in black and white photography because that is the shadow zone where there's detail in the shadows. They're not so dark you can't see in them. And that's an important zone to remember because you'll use that a lot in black and white photography. Your spot meter helps you place those. So I'm setting my camera to a 60th at 5.6 and I know that the highlights will not be burned out. Let's take the picture. Check my focus, check my level. Whenever you're taking a picture of something like this, you really want to make sure that you get your levels right because you want all the lines to be correct. A 60th at 5.6. So spot metering, I think there's two takeaways from this. One, spot metering allows you to place parts of your photograph into certain zones. That can be quite important sometimes. But two, and I think more importantly, spot metering allows you to ensure that the photograph you're taking is going to be within the latitude of your film. And I think that's very important. You can't find out any other way whether or not 
the photograph is within the latitude of your film whether the shadows will have the details in they should have and the highlights should have the details in that they should have. So that's the two important parts of spot metering and the two reasons why you would use a spot meter. It's definitely a tool that I need and use all the time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this kind of video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I will see you on Friday for a tip.